This is Jeremy with Math Boot Camps, and um, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to solve a quadratic equation using what's commonly referred to as the square root rule or the square root principle. There's a few different ways it's uh, mentioned in textbooks, but it all comes down to using the square root in a very particular way. In other words, remembering that when you take the square root, that it could have come from either a positive or negative value. You'll see what I mean as I do the problem. So here's an example of the type of problem that would be a good problem to use the square root rule on. In other words, factoring here might be too much of a pain and there's no, it's not in the classic form. We're used to seeing x squared, you know, a x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now, of course, this is technically still in this form, just b happens to be a zero. However, and you know, we haven't moved everything over. However, it's not in the classic form that we're used to seeing for something easy to factor. So instead what I'm going to do is anytime I just have an x squared, and this is really what I look for, if I have just an x squared, I go ahead and I solve for that because it's just one term that I have to worry about. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, okay, this is 2x squared equals, and I add 5 to both sides, 40, right? And then I say, okay, well, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. So I have x squared equals 20. And this is where the idea of the square root rule or square root principle comes in. Some people would tell you take the square root of both sides. Well, technically, you can't really do that because it's not a complete inverse. So really what you're doing, it's, it's a nice way to think, okay, I'm sort of taking the square root of both sides as saying, if I have something squared equals a number, then the something that was squared, so this would be x, has to equal plus or minus the square root of that number. So I get plus or minus 20. And this is the key step, is recognizing, okay, once you get it down, and I'm going to put the general principle over here. Once you get it down to x squared equals some number c, then x must equal plus or minus the square root of c. Makes it very, very easy to remember. Now, of course, I'm not going to leave it like this because 20 under a square root can be simplified because it's 4 times 5, right? So I'm going to just put a little note, 4 times 5. And 4 is 2 times 2, so it's a, it's a perfect square. So, okay, I can actually write this as x equals plus or minus square root of 4 is 2, so it'd be 2 on the square root of 5. It really is that simple when you use the square root property. Like I said, it doesn't always come up. What I look for when I decide if I'm going to solve something like this is uh, something like uh, where you have just a single x squared. So even uh, an equation like x squared equals 1 or 5x squared equals 100. Anything where I have just a single x squared, a single term squared, I'm going to use this property. 